Well, Guy Lombardo is one of the great stories. He's one of the great characters in the history of Jones Beach. And when I did the book, Jones Beach and Illustrated History, we devoted an entire chapter to him. In fact, uh, I, we called it The Guy Who Loved the Beach because, uh, an obvious pun, but Guy Lombardo, nobody loved Jones Beach more than Guy Lombardo. And part of the reason was that he, nobody had such a great deal as Guy Lombardo did. When Robert Moses first approached him about, the, about performing, about being the musical director for the new Jones Beach Theater, Guy Lombardo's career was sort of on a plateau. He'd been very, he and his Royal Canadians had been very popular in the 1920s and 30s, but by the 50s they were becoming, I guess what we would call today a bit of an oldies act. And so it was a nice opportunity for him. And when he arrived there, it turned into, so it became his retirement home, as one of uh, a Guy Lombardo historian explained it to me. Uh, he loved the beach. He loved the freedom he had to, to score and, and help produce a lot of these great musicals that came to Jones Beach, that came to the theater. Uh, and he loved the fact that he could commute by boat from his home in Freeport. And that's what he did. Imagine, even today, that's a pretty good deal, to commute to work at Jones Beach from by, your, by boat. And he did it for the better part of almost 1954 to, 19, to his death in 1977. And every photo you see of him, he's got a big smile on his face. He's usually there on his boat, the tempo, waving. And why not? He had, it, was a, it was a wonderful gig for he and his, his orchestra. And I think one of the other important things to recognize is part of the reason he had no stress was not only because it was Jones Beach and it was the summer and who can be stressed out at the beach, but Robert Moses had pretty much guaranteed him that he wouldn't lose money. So Guy didn't have to worry about empty seats. He didn't feel the pressure as if he was on a Broadway show. He could just do his thing and have fun. And people really did love what he did. Almost every major Broadway musical would come at some point to, uh, to Jones Beach, from Showboat to the Song of Norway and uh, The Sound of Music. Back then, the overall attendance at Jones Beach in the 50s and 60s was enormous, over like 10, 15 million a year. Now, it's about six and a half million a year, which is still a lot, but way down from, the, from its peak in the 50s and 60s, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But the flip side is, today, Jones Beach Theater makes buckets of money, and those shows, the Delsner shows, the rock and roll shows they have there, the pop shows, they do very well, um, and so it's the opposite. Everything is sort of inverted from the Guy Lombardo days. Back then, Guy's shows, as popular as he was, didn't make money, but the beach made a lot of money. So it's kind of interesting how that, that was inverted. But that said, I think artistically, I don't know, I'm not a critic, I, and I didn't see these. I don't know if his version of Showboat was better than the version that was on Broadway. He did get a lot of major talent here. In fact, one of the facts I found when I researched the book that I thought was really interesting is that he got Louis Armstrong to play. I mean, Louis Armstrong, considered today the greatest jazz musician ever, Guy Lombardo persuaded him to come and play trumpet, and I think it was in Showboat, in fact. So that's, he had major talent here, and people have very, very fond memories of it. So I think, I think regardless of the fact that the attendance may have been spotty, I think it was a, a you'd have to call his tenure there a resounding success in many other ways. The, uh, these productions, because there was water involved and they would try to get boats involved in every production, even if they had nothing to do with water, Guy Lombardo would always try to find a way to get boats involved. And because, A, he liked to do it and he got to be in the show that way, and also because it was an act with theater. You know, it was set up with stands and there was water separating the audience from the, from the stage, which was pretty unique. Moses loved him and Moses loved the idea of having Guy Lombardo as the house band and the, or the, the, the resident talent at the theater. He relentlessly pursued Lombardo, who had by then gone on back on tour with his orchestra around the country. That's how they made, that was their bread and butter living before he established this permanent residency at Jones Beach. He had a boat called the Tempo, and it was a powerboat. 
and I'm not sure what the specific, what kind of boat it would be considered today, but it was one of these speed boats that would zip through the water. You can still see them in Zach's Bay today. And that's how he would go from, uh, from Freeport to, uh, to Jones Beach. In fact, in the book, we have a picture of him on the tempo and, you know, he's, you know, enjoying himself. The Jones Beach is supposed to be a place of, you know, of fond memories and happiness. Nobody was happier at Jones Beach than Guy Lombardo.